Welcome back. The Senate confirming Antony Blinken as Joe Biden's new secretary of state today. But some are questioning whether the Biden administration is ready and willing to handle pressure from China. My next guest was one of the first Trump officials sanctioned by the Chinese communist regime. Joining me now in this exclusive interview is former secretary of state Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here tonight. Maria, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's great to be with you. So I know that you have spent time with the uh, new uh, team, the Biden administration, uh, Tony Blinken. Do you believe that they understand the threats that America faces effectively enough? You know, Maria, I, I do. I, I think they understand it, and I, I wish them all the best. This is an adversary that, as you know, is determined to create uh, a global hegemon to impact Asia in ways that are detrimental to the people of the United States of America. I think they know that. I think they see that. I, I, am, I hope that they do well by understanding that appeasement, backing off, uh, giving in, th those are not the things that will lead the Chinese Communist Party to change its direction, change its course of action. Rather, they need to see a fierceness, a resistance, uh, a capacity to impose costs on them. And if they do that, if they get that piece right, I'm confident the American people will uh, be rewarded by a relationship uh, that protects the American people in a way that the Chinese Communist Party hope, hopes that we just simply won't do. Well, I, I just wonder if Hunter Biden's relationships and partnerships with Chinese companies tied to the CCP will get in the way. I wonder if uh, the, uh, the reviewing of the ban on investing in Chinese companies that are tied to the CCP opens up some room for them to be softer. And then, of course, there are the sanctions. You were the first one to get sanctioned by Beijing, Communist Party, after the election. Here's what Senator Tom Cotton told me this weekend about those sanctions. Listen to this. Got to get your take. Yeah, these sanctions against former Trump administration officials are a dangerous and insidious escalation of China's effort to influence American policy. Now, I was sanctioned last summer, and I kind of laughed it off. But these sanctions apply not just to these individuals. They apply to any company or institution that associates with them. Now, this is not designed so much to punish Trump administration officials for taking a tough line on China, but to send a shot across the bow to Biden administration officials. Do you agree with that, Secretary? Is this a message to the Biden administration? What do you think of these sanctions? Yeah. Look, I think Senator Cotton largely has that right. I think this is something they want uh, the current Secretary of State, the National Security Advisor, all the counterparts of the people that were sanctioned. I want, they want them to be thinking about this when they're doing their calculus about decisions. I hope, hope these officials won't take that into account. I hope they'll do the right thing, regardless of what it may mean for them personally. I don't have any doubt that the Chinese Communist Party was trying to send a message. But, Maria, it's important, too, to remember, this is part and parcel of the Chinese Communist Party's behavior. This is exactly the kind of thing they've done uh, for an awfully long time. And for 50 years, for 50 years, administration after administration turned the other cheek, allowed the Chinese Communist Party to run over America. And our administration didn't do that. We responded. And I think, I think the CCP is hoping that we will have been an anomaly that we will have been one administration for four years that challenged them, that confronted them, that protected the American people. And so I think they wanted to impose sanctions on those individuals who executed our administration's policy and implemented it in a way that will cause anyone else, not just the current administration, but those who come behind, people in business, will say uh, that there's a cost if you challenge China. We need to be prepared to walk through that fire. We need to be prepared to get it right. And we have a duty, a solemn duty, as does the next administration, to continue to tell the Chinese Communist Party we're not going to go back to what we did, the appeasement policy of the last 40, 50 years of engaging and allowing the Chinese Communist Party to take advantage of the American people and destroy millions of jobs here in America, that's just unacceptable, and the United States won't tolerate it. Well, then why is Joe Biden banning the words China virus? I mean, in, in, in all of the things in terms of this cancel culture, now we are not allowed to say China virus, even though it originated in Wuhan. You also have Kurt Campbell, who is the Asia czar at the NSC. Uh, you, you, he was making money in, in China consulting. So was Tony Blinken. Is this going to get in the way? Are they going to say, well, wait a minute, China just told me if 
I push back on them, they're going to take away my livelihood. I mean, these are real stories. Hunter Biden and his ties to Chinese companies tied to the military. Does this get in the way of policy? These Chinese sanctions, Maria, these Chinese threats, they are, they are real stories. More importantly, they are real facts, real facts that I think the American people need to know about, come to understand how it might impact American foreign policy as it relates to China. Um, but make no mistake, I hadn't, I hadn't seen this, this banning of the, the term Chinese virus. I've called it the Wuhan virus uh, almost since its inception. It, it began in Wuhan. It's a, it, it is, in fact, a virus that came from that place. We know that the Chinese Communist Party covered that up. We know that they disappeared. Doctors and journalists who wanted to write about it were told they couldn't. We know that, I think it's still to this date, the World Health Organization hasn't been able to see the most important elements of where this virus may have begun. Uh, these are things the State Department was talking about while I was a Secretary of State. We put out just in my last couple of weeks a, a few key pieces of information about some doctors who contracted something that looked like were symptomatic of something that seemed like this virus back in November of 2019. These are important things. The American people need to know them because they matter. They matter for our health, for our safety, for our economic prosperity, and for our security. And I hope. And I'm counting on this next administration to do what the American people demand of them and continue to confront the Chinese Communist Party. Well, I'm glad that you put that information out. You're right. We, we learned because of you and because of your administration that doctors, scientists were getting sick in October and November of, of 2019. Shouldn't President Biden acknowledge China's role in the coronavirus? We, I mean, I don't know. Have you heard him say anything about the, about the Communist Party's role in the coronavirus? And should the administration say something about these sanctions? Should they come out and say, you will not sanction a former secretary of state? I hope they will. I hope they'll take sanctions against former officials the same seriousness we took actions that other governments tried to take against ours. I remember when Michael McFaul was uh, attacked by the Russians, we came out and uh, defended him. It's the right thing to do. Uh, more importantly, with respect to the virus, uh, look, this virus um, has now destroyed thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. Uh, economic toll that is un unequaled in an awfully long time. And it began in a place of Wuhan, China, and the Chinese Communist Party did everything it could to give itself the time to respond to it on its own terms. And it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It's duty to the world to let us know that this indeed had human-to-human -human transmission and that it had begun, this threat had begun. Uh, that was enormously costly to the American people, and those are facts. So, yes, I hope this administration and uh, everyone in the world will acknowledge where it began and how the Chinese Communist Party misbehaved and will make sure that two things. One, that there's a cost associated with that, and second, that we put in place processes. It's, look, it's why we left the World Health Organization. It was a failed political institution. We have to put in place processes to make sure something like this can never emanate from China again. Joe Biden just is getting the United States back in the World Health Organization. Yes, I, uh, I think that's a mistake. Uh, President Trump thought that was a mistake. We, we believed it was unreformable. It had become uh, corrupt and political and had kowtowed to the Chinese Communist Party at the most critical moment, at the most critical mm. moment of the global health challenge. Uh, we didn't think it was fixable. We were working our best to make sure that there was a system that it could actually deliver a global health solution that actually helped health all around the world. We think the WHO has no op opportunity to do that. And uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope it turns out that the WHO can fix this. But I, we couldn't see a path to making that happen. Well, they obviously went along with the Beijing line, would not allow the CDC in there to investigate the origins of the coronavirus back in March. You have called out China for crimes against humanity and genocide. Crimes against humanity obviously was used to prosecute the Nazis. So the question is, will the Biden administration do anything about it? Tony Blinken did agree with your assessment, Secretary, when you did call out the genocide. Uh, and what's happening with the Uyghurs right now? I was, I was very pleased to see that the uh, statement that I'd made, the determination that I had made about this genocide uh, was concurred with by uh, Secretary Blinken. I think that's fantastic. It's true. <laughs> this, yeah. These are real facts, and these are real people being truly impacted by some things we haven't seen since the 1930s, the atrocities that have taken place there. and. 
the actions, the sterilizations, the forced abortions that are continuing to take place there are of historic proportion, and the world, not just the United States, but the whole world needs to unite and put costs on the Chinese Communist Party such that they change and stop the, these atrocities that are taking place there in uh, Xinjiang, China. I want to I want to move on to the Middle East and the great work you did in terms of the Abraham Accords and the uh, the, the uh, normalization with Israel. But before I get there, Taiwan. It feels like Beijing is testing this administration. They are testing uh, them with Taiwan. Uh, obviously, 12 aircrafts on Saturday, 15 on Sunday, flying fighters and bombers into Taiwan's international zone. Uh, that's one thing. Another test of these sanctions we talked about. And then, of course, there's, there's Jack Ma disappearing for two months, a, a real message to the American companies going over there, uh, getting ready to build and—, and, and and grow their businesses, uh, those financial services companies that, that, got, uh, that, that got licenses to do so. Do you expect Beijing to try to take over Taiwan the way it has moved into Hong Kong, the way it has acquired Tibet? Well, I don't think there's any doubt what the ultimate ambition of General Secretary Xi Jinping is. Um, I also know the promise that they've made. They've made a promise that that would not be how they would behave. And I have every belief that they will challenge this administration to see if they can find uh, the soft underbelly, to see if they can find a path forward to continue to apply pressure to the Taiwanese people. I hope this administration will do what a number of administrations have done. I think ours did it in a way that was unique. But to make clear the expectation that the Chinese Communist Party would live up to its commitments in the same way that we would live up to our commitments that we made with respect to Taiwan. It's the right thing for the American people. It's how you put America first. And it's the thing that the Chinese Communist Party will understand the most. And you would think that the rest of the world understands this. I mean, you led the rest of the world in this, in, in terms of communicating and understanding the threat. Twelve countries at this point have pulled out of the China Belt and Road Initiative. Thirty countries have banned Huawei. Nice work, Secretary, by getting the allies uh, in the corner uh, with the United States. Let me move on to the Middle East, the Abraham Accords and the normalization of relations with Israel. Is there another country poised to do that? How do you continue that, knowing that the, the lead negotiator on the Iran nuclear deal, Wendy Sherman, is going to be the number two in the Biden State Department? Jake Sullivan, Tony Blinken all participated in the Iran deal. Uh, it looks like Joe Biden wants to get the United States back into the Iran deal. They say they want to have uh, different, uh, different terms, but will they push for those terms when Iran balks at them? Maria, for the protection of the American people and, indeed, stability and peace in the Middle East, I hope that they will. Uh, there were two things that set the conditions for the prosperity and stability we created in the Middle East. Uh, the first was the president's decisions with respect to Israel, whether it was the Golan Heights or recognizing Jerusalem as the rightful capital of the Jewish homeland. Um, those things uh, made clear that we weren't going to allow the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians to stand in the way of peace and prosperity. The second thing we did was to withdraw from the JCPOA and put enormous pressure on the regime in Iran. Those two things allowed the countries that are impacted most by Iran, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, all, all Oman, all the nations there in the Middle East that live with Iran as right. a neighbor appreciated the work that we did. And so many of them have joined the Abraham Accords. Others have begun to uh, ease restrictions in doing business with Israel. I think this trend will continue, but it will require those two central underpinnings, those two understandings about who the real bad guy is there in the Middle East, the nation that is fomenting the terror, fomenting the instability. That recognition is central to permitting these countries to continue to expand their relationship with Israel and to expanding peace and prosperity all throughout that region. You know, General Jack Keane said to me uh, recently that we are outgunned some of these threats. For example, China. China has more Navy ships than we do, more long-range missiles. What are the plans in terms of making sure that our military, uh, our readiness is, is, is at the right point uh, and ready for these threats? Do you think that the PLA is winning? in terms of its readiness, in terms of its military. What needs to be done now with regard to the military in the face of all of this? 
Um, we had General Keene's right to be concerned about it, and President Trump put us back on the right trajectory. You, you remember this for, uh, for an awfully long time, for the previous eight years before the Trump administration, uh, we had continued to deny the Department of Defense the resources that they were asking for to do precisely this. Uh, second, we also actually delivered in making sure everyone understood, including the Department of Defense, that the threat was from this great power in China. And while we had to continue to perform our counterterrorism mission, we needed to make sure we reoriented our focus. And so we started, we got everything in the right place. We put the building blocks in place so that we would continue to be the most superior military in the world capable of defeating any military that was needed, whether that was cyber threats or threats to satellites or more conventional threats, that we would have the capacity to do that. I'm confident that we still can, but make no mistake about it. The Chinese Communist Party and its military, the People's Liberation Army, is doing its utmost to be a rival to the United States military. Well, what, what about Russia? G7 ministers concerned with jailing of Russian protesters. The Biden administration says it wants a new arms control agreement with Russia. We all know that Russia cheats. Uh, is this about uh, to Vladimir Putin? Well, we worked hard to try and get an arms agreement with the Russians, too, and, and frankly, got close. We got the Russians to agree to freeze their nuclear weapon systems uh, for the first time. Uh, we ultimately couldn't get that done because we couldn't get them to permit us to verify that commitment in a way that would have been important. I hope the next administration will continue to push in this direction. If, if we can reduce nuclear risk in the world, that is certainly a good thing. Uh, but make no mistake about it, we, we were as tough on Russia as any administration. We sanctioned uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of officials. Uh, we worked hard to make sure that we con tried to convince Putin that he had to behave in a way that was consistent with global standards. Uh, we didn't always succeed at that, but there was no doubt that the United States stood ready to protect the American people from that threat, as well as the threat from the Chinese Communist Party. Secretary, final final uh, question here. What are your plans? A lot of Trump supporters feel very good about the way you handled yourself. You were the last one out the door. You stuck with President Trump <laughs> until the end. Will you run in 2024? Goodness, Maria, that's a long way off. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to get settled and uh, move on to the, the next thing. Uh, the work that we did, the mission that we were on uh, was important. I believe that with all my heart. We did a good turn for the American people to protect them and create the conditions for their prosperity by putting America first. I hope to continue to be a part of that. I don't know precisely where, what my role will be in that, but I, I'm committed to continuing that effort. Well, that is not a no, and I will take it. Secretary, it is good to see you tonight. Thanks right. very much. Thank you, Maria. So we'll long. We'll see you soon. Secretary